I'm Joel Anderson, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm 29 years old, and I live in Fallbrook in Southern California. I hope, I hope, I want to tell my story what autism means for me. I hope to inspire you to dream big, and in doing so, help others. I'm going to tell you where I've been, where I am, and where I'm going. I was diagnosed with autism at the age of three, 25 years ago. Back in 1993, one in fifteen hundred kids were being diagnosed somewhere on the autism spectrum. Today is around one in fifty-four boys who are diagnosed with autism. My brother is also autistic and he is thirty-two years old, nonverbal and needs lots of support. But we know he is very smart. We are diagnosed on the same day, much to my mother's surprise. Autism for me means that I have very sensitive senses like hearing, smelling, taste, sight, and touch. My ear doctor says, I can hear the grass grow. See grass growing that I hear? Gra hear the grass grow? Yes. It could be soft sounds or loud sounds that bother my ears, so I need to plug my ears with my fingers. If you see anyone plugging their ears, it doesn't mean they don't like you. It may be that certain sound sounds overwhelm them. My skin is sensitive to touch. When someone touches my skin, sometimes I feel painful or I feel prickly. It is hard to be in a crowd of people. It makes me worry that someone may bump into me or touch me. When any of my senses are overwhelmed, it is hard for me to concentrate and learn. That's why people being patient with me is important. The more I practice, the better I get. Shaking hands used to be difficult and now I practice, it doesn't bother me anymore. I am much better at being in crowds. I've been on the rush hour trains in Tokyo and at a USD football game in the Coliseum with 94,000 crazy fans. I'm hypervisual. I see brighter and more intense colors than most of you. This is why it is hard for me to look into the eyes of other people. It's not that I don't want to, if I'm trying to pay attention to what they're saying, I need to look away so my brain can focus on their words instead of being overwhelmed by their faces. But my hypervisual sensitivities help me with my art. I'll tell you more about it later. When I was three, I started therapies at the California Avenue School. The therapies I worked with were applied behavioral analysis, discrete trial training, vision therapy, occupational therapy, speech and communication, just to name a few. I was mainstreamed at a typical preschool with a teacher's aide. I like being with other kids at preschool because I watch their example, examples on how to do things. One of the train methods I used was called teach. It was amazing for me. It got me involved on how to complete tasks, helped me to be organized, and taught me independent skills. By using these tools, people didn't have to repeat it verbally out loud to me over and over. That would only mess up my thoughts more. People like me need time to think and process. Give us a chance. When I was young, everyone in my family had visual schedules, even my mom. It helped me understand where she was and what she was doing. This helped me be less anxious. I use visual schedules to help me prepare for school or to clean my room. I still use schedules today. We all do. It's called a to-do list. So you can see how TEACH is helpful for students and families. This is how I use my visual schedules for my businesses. I have a list for doing each project and no, and a and what you, it's a book thing, folder case, where I keep my visual schedules for my businesses. Also, here are more examples. I hang each project on the door and follow the steps that need to be followed first before every, before the next one. And I also use my book mailing station. In grades 1st th through 3rd, my teacher's aide, Mrs. Judy, 
pre-taught me the subject the day before my teacher did. He was always kind and patient. By her examples, the other students were also kind and patient. Learning early was a good thing so I could understand what the teacher was saying. Mrs. Judy used peer tutors for social skills on the playground and in the classroom. Recess was difficult for me as there was no structure. I didn't like sharing with the swings because it was uncomfortable for me. I liked singing and being in plays on stage. Those were predictable to me when I learned my lines and songs. It was comforting. You can use these strengths to teach your weaknesses. Theater, art, music, history taught me a lot. Books of classical literature inspire me to learn more, especially Shakespeare. Renaissance is one of my favorite time periods in history. I use my math. I use. I learn my math by using songs from the Schoolhouse Rock. I memorize my times tables before everyone else in the class. Little Twelve Toes was my favorite. Through fourth and eighth grade, I was in the homeschool and private school combo. At first, kids started to bully me and tease me. I was less anxious at home, so I could study using my art strengths in the arts. I attended a private high school where I had only 10 students at a time. I didn't want to go to the PE gym because it's a sensory place with lots of noise and has bumping activities and hands-on sports. My coach believed in me and encouraged me. Every day it got a little easier, and that helped me reach my highest goals. Through tough love and motivation, I even joined the softball team, ran track and field, and learned how to play golf. I was the most improved student at PE that year. While I was in high school, kids were still trying to bully and tease me by whistling. They knew the sounds hurt my ears. I would ask them nicely to stop, or I would walk away, or ask staff for support and protection, which they gave me, and they did. I took a few subjects at a time, and it was a PACE program. In 2009, I graduated from high school with a diploma. I even gave the valedictorian address at graduation. Then on the day I graduated, the kids heard my speech, and they finally realized how much they hurt me, and they apologized to me. The teachers, the principals, and the coaches are so proud of me. I, they believed in me. Social skills can be a challenge for me. It is also difficult for me to be around people who are different from me, so I understand how it is hard for others too. This is why I ride my books and talk to kids at schools. It helps them, and at the same time, it helps me too. I have to learn everything through practicing it over and over. It's like having a toolbox in my head, and I pull out the right tool on how to respond in different situations. Some people just learn it so easy, but I have to practice. One of the most difficult things for me is my obsessive compulsive disorder. OCD for short. It started when I was 10. I have videos that replay in my head that are triggered by certain words, like seeing no soliciting signs or seeing them at signs. Even the word San Diego, the name of the town I live in, is difficult, but sometimes I need to just have courage and push through it. It was easier for me in China because I could read the signs. On the other side, Autism has provided me with some great strengths. Since I have very good hearing, I am very good at sound editing for video productions and animations. I am also pretty good at learning languages and getting the accent right. When I was in China, they said I sounded like a real Chinese man. I am extra creative in putting stories together and have a keen eye for camera angles for my stop motion films. Although it is hard for me to follow along a conversation one-to-one -one with someone, it is much easier for me to talk in front of an audience. I really like making people smile, and that shows up in my art. Even the animals I paint have at least a hit of smile. At nine years old, I started learning animation. I could draw characters from fairy tales, characters of people I know. My big dream was to have my own studio to teach others how to create and produce videos and movies that teach good character qualities for children. 
I studied graphic motion design and animation in college for two years and at a studio in Los Angeles. I continued to learn very cool themes from my mentors. Joel's Vision Arts was my business when I started when I was 12 years old. I love being an entrepreneur. I paint and create cards and prints and produce videos and animations. I'm an author, illustrator, com commissioned by private collectors, authors, and companies. Author Wendy Hancock, creator of Rudy Stories, hired me to illustrate her books. The second book is currently in the works. Public speaking to preschoolers to th through to university students and corporations was one of my favorite things to do, but giving back to community really puts a smile on my face. My mom is my manager and we've had fun creating projects together. But we can't do it all without our mentors who support and encourage me in several areas. I'd like to show you a few of my animations. Here's one of my favorite animations that was used in the film Normal People Scare Me Too. <laughs> Here is an animation logo I made from one of my a paintings. Here are some two animated gifs I made for a computer program that helps kids learn to talk. Like this garden gnome throwing flowers from a basket. And a mouse hopping from a mushroom. Painting is a huge area of my life. This piece explains a lot about who I am. Colors of my mind was honored to be on exhibit in the California Museum in Sacramento in the Shriver Gallery for a special ex art exhibit, Art and Advocacy. I went there to see it in person. This artwork is based on a poem I wrote in 2008. Let me recite for you. I paint in colors of the rainbow, and I see yellow of the sun and blue in the sky. I know you feel fine and smile when you see the colors of my mind. I see joy in green, courage in blue, strength in red, and love in yellow too, the colors of my mind. I draw pictures of history, and I see landscapes of adventure, characters of mystery. I know you feel fine and smile when you see the colors of my mind. And when I paint, I feel peace. I can face the world with ease. I see the world around of artistry displaying creativity. I traveled to get this inspiration to have another look at the colors of my mind. I hope you enjoy that. When I paint, it makes me feel peaceful inside. Sometimes I see anger, sadness, and fear in black. And I don't like to use dark colors or paint tragic art. I'd rather paint in bright colors I see to make people smile. There are five layers within the painting based on my mind. This is a mixed media artwork. The first layer is a light blue background with my name Joel in four different colors. Red, yellow, green, and blue. These colors are featured in the song. They are the foundation of who I am. The second layer shows my OCD thoughts. Some of them are city limit signs, movie characters, no soliciting signs, and the name of the grocery store, Vons. The third layer features some memory Bible verses explain about renewing my mind and thinking pleasant thoughts. One of my most helpful verses is Philippians 4 verse 8. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This verse and many others, like 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 and Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6, Bring me peace. Think about a favorite verse or quote that comforts you. Write on a card to keep with you. The fourth layer is an abstract pop art style of paint splatters that cover up all the OCD layers and the memory Bible verses. Painting this picture helps me feel peace and face the world with ease. Get it? The colors I used were green for joy, blue for courage, red for strength, and yellow for love. The fifth and final layer has a self-portrait and white outline. It has the words joy, courage, strength, and love 
in four different colors, outlining the mouth and fills in the eyebrows. So now you get an idea what goes inside the colors of my mind. Do you have a special color that helps you to be calm? Think about it for a moment. Life is not meant to be to do it on your own. My parents helped to start many autism programs that are still in place today. There was almost nothing when I was little. Studies have shown early intervention and support can make a positive impact for a child. We are so happy to join in and volunteer with the Autism Tree Project Foundation. They are changing lives one heart at a time. We have volunteered with them for 16 years now. They provide free screenings for children in preschools and all kinds of cool programs for the kids to experience life in a fun way. I have been inspired to be a philanthropist for volunteering with ATPF. Tawn and Dana Hoff founded ATPF when their son Garrett was little. They want to help families get early diagnosis so the kids could get the best start at therapies. They also became my family. They inspire me to be the best me I can be and include me in all aspects of the foundation. This has helped me grow as an artist, speaker, and human being. ATPF has now become my client and they hired me to do lots of their artwork for the foundation. Back in 2013, for the 10-year gala, they commissioned me to make 50 rock and roll album covers as a gift for the core volunteers for ATPF and they were displayed at the Hard Rock Hotel before the gala. I was honored with the ATBF Volunteer of the Decade Award. It makes me happy that my art makes people smile and raises money for the foundation. I like to make money with my art so I can give back. Dana Hoff and Lisa Kaufman have put together an amazing speaking tour for me in Pennsylvania. I'll be speaking at Drexel University in later. And I'm speaking now here at Rutgers University and with several other special events. I would not be able where would not be where I am today without love and support of Todd, Dana, Lisa, Garrett, and the whole ATPF family. It is hard for me to make friends on my own. One person who is willing to be my friend could be a bridge to the next friend. At first, I helped Autism Tree Project to organize a University of San Diego football mentor program. As I spoke to the football players, Kyle Negretti, my first mentor, listened and became my mentor, and even signed 23 players to be mentors for other kids with autism. The next year he switched schools to punt for USC Trojans, but he stayed as my friend. My next mentor, Amwan Adiat, Emmy, Adi for short. They become my friends, and then my brothers. We do stuff together, like going to Disneyland or out to dinner. I even got to spend the night at Kyle's apartment. Kyle and Audie visit me at my art shows or at my speaking events. I make art for them as gifts. I have a picture with Kyle and me with my art in a book called The Art of Autism by Deborah Hosseini. Kyle and I have even been on TV together. I like to go watch them play football, even though I didn't like football. They are my friends and I want to cheer for them. For the last six years, Adi has been playing semi-pro for the Fujitsu Frontiers in Japan. We went there to go see him play. Sports is a way, great way to connect with a friend. Now they, can, now they go on family vacations with us, too, whenever they can. Last year, we three guys went on a Caribbean cruise with my parents. It was amazing. When I was 16, I told my mom I want to be do like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and speak to the schools to end segregation of people, students with special needs. Those are big shoes to fill, she said. Three months later, I was asked to speak at my first school to a thousand kids out on the playground. I started getting letters from kids about how they're encouraged to be a friend, not to bully, and they're starting to be friends to kids with special needs. I've spoken to over 30,000 kids now, from preschools to universities. I was even on the Pac-12 football network with my football brother Kyle from USC. 
The kids love my art, and I draw pictures for them. I read my book and sing for the kids. It's great to see and make new friends and also stick up for each other. The children's book I've written and illustrated is The Medieval Trio Tales. It's a story with a twist of history. The main characters are Remus the Minstrel, Sir Simon the Knight, Baron Lady Linda, and Jordor the Dog. They were all created from my imagination and my most earliest sketches I started in 2004 when I was 14 years old. Each of the books will teach a different character quality like courage, friendship, teamwork, and perseverance. Courage at the Concert is the first book and it talks about having courage to stake out for someone in need and how to be a friend and not to be a bully. As a matter of fact, I characterize myself as a town crier. At the end of the book, there is a scroll that provides tips on how to put into practice the theme of the book, 10 Steps to Being a Friend. I have always learned best to music, so my music teacher and I wrote a song called It Makes My Day Having You as a Friend. I teach it to the kids at schools and have artwork to go along with the words. The song talks about being friends to someone who may be different than themselves and not to be a bully, sharing, play games, and eat lunch together. I was bullied in school and it is very hurtful. I've learned some kids bully because they don't know how to be a friend in the first place. It makes me happy the book and the song are helping the kids. Once again, I went to my mom, Mom, I want to help kids with special needs all over the world. Okay, she said, let's pray and see what will happen. Autism Tree entered me into the International Natural Autistic People Awards in Canada, and in 2010, I won an award for a community achievement. The next year, the Anko Awards invited me back to be a host to sing and teach an art class. In 2012, I was the International Ambassador of the United States of America alongside with Temple Grandin. I met her a few times. It was an honor. In 2013, I got a phone call inviting me to travel with an autism team to China. It was a dream come true. I have always had a heart for China. I painted four murals to take with me to present to a special needs orphanage. There I also got to share my story through a translator. When the children were at nap time, I painted animal murals outside the bedroom doors. When they came out to see the animals, they squeal with delight. It was worth painting in the heat humidity of the hallways to see their happy faces. My art now hangs in three other schools besides the orphanage. It is also in a Cape school in Cape Town in South Africa. I returned to China in 2015 as a keynote speaker in Nanjing for the Amity International Autism Conference. Presenting a special painting I created for this event to the director was an honor. They had us on the Nanjing Evening News. The same year, I gave a short talk at the Johnny and Friends International Global Access Conference in Woodland Hills to a thousand people from 50 different countries around the world. In my interview, I gave a call to action. One, be a friend. Two, be a mentor. Three, hire someone with autism. Four, be the heart of Jesus. Paul Nair of African Water Projects answered my call. At the break, he came back and hired me to do an educational animation to teach children in Africa on how germs spread and keep their bodies healthy and to keep the waters clean. It is currently being used across Africa. I've been traveling the world with my arts helping people with and kids with disabilities all over the world. I've been to Canada three times, twice in China, Japan, and Peru. We create smile bags filled with art supplies to give to children on our trips. I'm so glad my mom never says, you can't do that, that dream is too big or silly. But instead, she prayed with me to see what God had planned for me. Then she just says she just hangs on tight for the ride. The last few years have been very exciting with new opportunities working with organizations like Autism Tree Project Foundation, The Art of Autism, Miracle 139 International, mainly Mozart, and Reaching the Hungry, and Divine Path. I have been blessed with mentors like international art artist Julian Johnson, videographer Adam Lancer, author Wendy Hancock, and so many more. It is mind-boggling 
I have learned social skills, job skills, and friendships. On a final note about art and music, before my art career, I started playing musical instruments. I learned how to play the violin at ten, age 10 and guitar and piano at age 16. This painting, Tris Musique, Trey Musique, features the musical instruments that I played in all my life. For three years, I provided scholarships for children with autism to have music therapy. I love giving the gift of music. But for now, there's only so many hours in a day. And I use a lot of them to paint. How many of you enjoy painting a musical instrument? How many of you enjoy playing a musical instrument? How many of you like to paint? For the last two years with the art of autism, I participate with mainly Mozart, a summer symphony series featuring the best musicians from around the world. My first painting was a course Mozart, uh, and I aptly named it Mozart. It was the featured artwork for that year. I was so excited that it was sold at a private home for the mainly Mozart Genius Weekend event. Do you see the colored notes on the sheet music behind Mozart? Sometimes those are the colors I see in my brain. When I hear the note A, I see red, B is yellow, D is purple, and G is orange. Listening to a music is like an artwork masterpiece in my head which can be very vibrant and magical. And now this year, I paint another Mozart portrait for this year's theme, Mozart's Music in the Mind. In that painting, it features music notes coming outside of Mozart's head, Mozart's brain that is, and it features the musical instruments that he's played like the piano, violin, and flute recorder, as well as sheet music of his famous operas, Don Giovanni, The Marriage of Figaro, and The Magic Flute. I guess I'm more like Mozart than I thought. I play the recorder, violin, and piano too. As a special piece and tribute to the amazing Derek Barvaccini, I decided to paint him. He is an incredible pianist and he is autistic and blind. He perseveres just like me. For the first time, I paint a black and white painting. Derek is a masterful on the keyboard of ebony and ivory, and the black and white tones make me think of ebony and ivory keyboards. This year has led me to many exciting opportunities. On June 1st, at the Mainly Mozart Music in the Mind Symposium, I had the honor of painting a portrait of Dr. Temple Grandin live on stage while she was speaking. It was a big opportunity. I practiced for months painting her at least 10 times. On the day of the event, I was so nervous. I persevered even though it was a hard painting live in front of 500 people. Dr. Grandin loved it and autographed the canvas. This really stretched me as a human being and an artist. I'm so glad I didn't say no. The art of autism is a wonderful foundation to provide artistic artists around the world amazing opportunities. What can you say yes to, even though it may be hard? I know you will be encouragement to others. What's next, you ask? My mom is still hanging on. I'm going to Japan in November. It is an honor to have two of my pieces selected in the exhibit at the National Art Center in Tokyo with 38 international professional artists. A new stretch for me, but I'll do my best to persevere, work hard, and enjoy the journey of becoming a full-time professional working artist. In closing, I would like to share some tips for you at the community. This is a painting called The Spirit of the Barrio. It represents friendship and love for children with autism in their community. One, it all starts at home. Love the people with special needs in your family. Include them in holidays or at family events. Too many of us have been cut off from family and it hurts not only me, but also my parents. And not to mention, you will be missing out on pretty cool people. Two, do the same for your neighbors. Say hi, include them in all street festivals. Go support them in Special Olympics or at school events. 3. Reach out to people you don't know yet. With 1 in 54 kids being diagnosed with autism, chances are you know someone with autism. 
4. Don't be afraid. Hang out life together. It is hard for me to make friends. I have a few of not giving up on me, even though it may be hard for them at first. We figured out that Skype and FaceTime is easier for me than just the phone because I have a visual. I don't need hours of interaction with someone. Even just 10 minutes is good to start building the friendship and building the trust. I need to feel comfortable. I need to know you're safe. When I know you can then be a bridge that will help me with more friendships like my friend Kyle did for me. 5. Mentor someone with special needs. How to navigate the world which can be daunting. We all need support. 6. Apprentice someone. Are you musical? Teach music lessons or just have having a fun having a jam session each week. Are you an artist? Paint together. Business and marketing teach how, how to market what their skill is. I always need help with the business part of my art. 7. This is a new way for learning and we are going back to the Renaissance. If you had a skill in painting, you might study Art Da Vinci. If you like carving your initials and rocks, they sent you off to work with Michelangelo. You like deep thinking and solving questions, you study with Socrates. For some of us, this is the best way to learn. 8. Hire someone in your company. It is hard for me to interview well, and office social skills can be difficult. But I can do the work, and so can many other talented people on the autism spectrum. We just need the chance that you have a great employee. Everyone has a purpose. You have a purpose. You have a passion. Love your family, love your neighbors, and the world will be a better place. Have courage to try new things and dream big. This is my dream for you. Thank you for having me here. So smile and be the best you you can be. Thank you. So Joe, what inspires you to paint? I look at history books and artwork of Da Vinci, Picasso, and Van Gogh, and world landmarks, and pictures of animals. Okay. And um, do you find yourself painting the same subject again and again, or do you change? I change. I do new paintings, whatever, what comes into my mind. No matter what I see, no matter where I go. Okay. And uh, what types of paint jobs have you had as an artist? I was an artist, illustrator, graphic designer, videographer, and painter. Okay. And, and what are your plans for the future? What kind of art would you like to do? I commissioned artwork and painting murals and to bring awareness as to is for example helping endangered animals thrive and make artwork and animation nice and uh, who are uh, your art mentors there is is a war-winning international artist Julianne Johnson next is Suzette Phillips painter and Richard Sturgles, who helped me paint portraits. Very nice. And tell me, where has your art been shown? It, I've been to Canada three times, twice in China, once in Peru, once in Japan, and, and in Yerevan, Armenia, and soon will be in Greece, and many, and, and Africa, and many others all over the world. Wow, you're the world traveler? Yes. And, uh, and uh, so we've heard about your upcoming exhibition in Tokyo. Yes. Can I, you tell us about that? My artwork, two of my art pieces of artwork were going to be showed there. And I was one of the 38 international artists there. Wow, that's amazing. 